everyone we are uh we are back i'm gonna call this interview with kenny london oh oh we are back we're about to interview kenny london daisy while i'm doing this do you want to do the plug for the sleuths this week oh my gosh i would love to do the plug for the sleuths as you all know sometimes you see me sometimes you see dom sometimes you see both of us on the screen along with our special guest and when we do the interviews you might think that it is us every time but it is not it is a collective team of uh, sleuths that you don't always see with us every single week on the show who research and come up with great questions for our guests so if you hear a question that you like do not thank us. Thank the t sleuthing team. Yep. Who are always as, what do you always say? Intrepid and wonderful and valuable and gorgeous and everything that earth all earthly desires could imagine. <laughs> I, I, I say the first two parts of that, but I'm not opposed <laughs> to the rest. Thank you, Daisy. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, all right. That being said, Kenny, you ready to get into your interview? Yeah, I am. Let's get, forward to it. let's get into it. All right. So you mentioned at the top of the show that you're a historian by trade and training, but you also yes. uh, take a lot from folklore. As a historian, what tools are you pulling from folklore for your research? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So while most of my research is in the archives, um, first, some of the archival materials that I found are explicitly folklore. Um, in that during the socialist period, um, folklore was very prescriptivist, mm. and like, you know, like, um, it was, but it was also a great way for scholars to preserve things, uh, like religion and spirituality that, uh, socialism did not think very kindly of, yeah. but they could say, oh, I'm just publishing it because it's folklore. Yeah. Uh, um, and there's, a, uh, I was one of the, my main topics is about hunting wolves. And I found a, um, uh, materials from a number of years of hunting conferences. And these are just like strip, like the hunters, um, association more or less just went around interviewing all the hunters, um, got like songs that they sing like they sketched like the pictures of like their greatest stories of like hunt uh sketched like the big like skulls that they got like very like um sort of uh um uh sort of oral history type material um presented at, in this package that was designed to for, to present uh hunting as socialist marxist labor mm -hmm. um and that this has a history to, to it the main folklore that i engage with is um um sort of i use a number of pre uh oral histories and interviews that other people use uh took and there's a lot of local folklore that shows up in the these interviews um for example the idea that um, monkey years in the 12 animal calendar cycle mm -hmm. are notoriously bad when it comes to winter disasters. Zood. Um, and they always cite 1945 as um, mm. uh, the, 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 the worst one. Um, but um, uh, there, I also am interested in pushing back my research on socialist wolf hunting to eventually try and make a project of history of wolf hunting just throughout history in Mongolia. And a lot of um, sort of discussion and ideas about wolves are heavily folkloric. Um, and uh, when it comes to ideas of um, taboo names for wolves, um, you give them nicknames. Uh, there are um, famous wolves like that like fit, were able to uh, evade hunters, like split paws and like ash gray and Ooh. other like um, like uh, uh, or like th uh, um, other sort of nicknames for these wolves. That uh, the same thing happens in America uh, in the nineteenth end of the nineteenth century when wolves were being exterminated. The um, older like there were stories talked about like, oh, this wise old wolf is able to evade the hunters. 
Um, but, and it, look, I got its paw, but it, it managed to escape the trap kind of deal. Um, and there's a lot of interaction between literature and folklore in Mongolia because of the long history of, um, of um, oral literature in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. um, though there is also a long history of written um, literature as well, but, but there's a lot of uh, intersection there. Oh. And, and th those are some of the, the major ways that I, um, um, I uh, engage uh, with, with with that. This is this is a very big question, but yeah, what what do you see as the relationship between the two fields of history and folklore? That's a, a great question. Like I feel like there is a lot of um, arbitrary divides, and this is not a new claim, just about the arbitrary divides in um, disciplines mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we only, I only say I do history because I want a job in a history department, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or a, 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 a area studies department, but I would then be the historian in that area of studies department, you know, it's, yeah, it's that makes a ton of sense. Of, yeah, it's an artifact of the job market, really. Um, and men, as well as obviously the history of the academy. Um, but in an ideal wor world, you know, I, I, I don't think that there's a lot of what it's too simple to say like oh history uses text because there's a lot of like history of um uh, of um oral literature and oral sources and uh oral history um which fascinatingly enough is exempt from irb even mm -hmm. though oral history is uh very similar to um uh, many like interviews that uh, social scientists do, but because history is the humanities, it's all uh, it's all good. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the, but I, I feel like a, a lot of history is about trying to um, put in contact and context uh, the present with the past. Mm. Um, and, um, sometimes history is, uh, is, uh, perhaps more interested in what we can figure out happened than necessarily folklore is where my understanding is not that, oh, it's my understanding. Please correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's more of a, um, these are the things that people believe um, and follow and and so forth, um, rather than trying to necessarily correct, um, like, oh, th this person believes this legend, but uh, th that didn't actually happen. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot less focus on trying to, like, correct the record in folklore than there is trying to uh, flesh out why people... Uh, do this, especially I think what you're hinting at like, when it comes to like belief. Yes, but but I yeah. but I will say that like I think maybe the thing uh, uh, when you're when you were kind of giving your definition of history, it sounds a lot like our definition of tradition. So like this whole like seeking a connection with the past. So yes. there we do have that big thing in common in like the center of a Venn diagrams. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean. We can see now in America, and, but this is not new to America. Every um, sort of uh, state has sort of mm -hmm. tried to reckon with how to write history um, correctly. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, which rarely, uh, in, which in which historians have always tried to straddle a line of existing um, within, um, but. Uh, people cling very tightly to their imagined ideas of mm. what happened, mm. even when, you know, we evaluate primary sources um, 
primary source could be anything really, but um, um, when talking with like, you know, basic undergrad course definition of primary source, talk more usually about um, contemporaneous um, uh, reporting uh, yeah. or uh, writing or, or oral oral history uh, of the uh, of the event. Um, uh, eventually, sort of, you go big brain and say everything is a primary source, but uh, <laughs> uh, to try and keep it. Um, uh, uh, but and the, like in my dissertation, I use I talk about movies and uh, songs and literature as well as um, these sort of um, more uh, traditional historical sources. But uh, um, there is a uh, agreed upon, generally agreed upon sort of way to evaluate uh, quality of sources. Uh, um, that talk about um, uh, events that uh, oftentimes do not jive with what either the state or the people within the state want to think about their history. Mm. Um, Socialist Mongolia history uh, definitely falls within this, both within the, the way that uh, Socialist Mongolian historians um, tried to write history in order to fit within a Marxist framework, um, mm -hmm. which uh, and make the Soviet Russians who really hated the Mongol Empire happy, <laughs> or generally, uh, you know, uh, and this was actually a major international incident in 1962 when there was a big Mongolian conference for the anniversary of Chinggis Khan's birth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a bunch of historians got up and said, like, Chinggis Khan ultimately helped form Mongolia as a state and might have done some bad things, but he helped Mongolia as a whole. Oh, my gosh. Um, and, and, and there are a number of Russian scholars who have, are racist. And the Soviet Russians who were there, you know, Mongolia was a satellite state of the Soviet Union at the yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They did not take take kindly to this. And actually, the, the guy and the... Um, ultimate socialist leader uh, used it to remove a rival, used this as an excuse to remove his rival who organized this anniversary event. Um, but there's also a lot of controversy over uh, socialist um, Mongolian reckoning, uh, reckoning of socialist Mongolia in history today um, in Mongolia. Um, the Stalinist uh, leader of Mongolia, who killed 38,000 Mongolians, Trobelsung, still has a statue in front of the National University in Ulaanbaatar. Uh, but, you know, some his defenders will say he doesn't, he didn't have a choice, to which I say, well, his two previous predecessors said no and were killed for it, so that is a choice. Yeah. Um, and, but, and, a lot of oral history and folklore, including uh, about um, the repression, has has popped up. Um, especially, there are a number of interesting stories about llamas who escaped uh, the mass purges mm -hmm. by being saved by wolves. Huh. The idea that that is fascinating. Uh, there's yeah, um, uh, there's a story of like a llama manages to escape and like. A wolf takes it into her den, and the wolf like kills sheep to bring to the llama, and then the locals hunt down the wolf and are about to kill it. And the llama said, "Wait, no, she was only killing for me." And they say, "Oh, okay," and they spare both of them. And I argue um, in my research and my recent paper is that this is sort of a um, a way llamas and wolves were both persecuted beings. Um, in the socialist era, so this sort of connection of like, you know, we get the underdog has to stick together, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, rather than a more. Oh, please go ahead, Daisy. No, I'm I am just agreeing with you. That is so interesting. I I see persecution a lot with like apex predators and and other kinds For of sure. important symbolic animals mm -hmm. to to different cultures. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of times, you know, the popular idea of the wolf in Mongolia and like Western popular imagination, as well as Chinese and oftentimes in Mongolian as well, is uh, uh, the wolf as a sort of spiritual. Uh, there's a famous Chinese novel, Wolf Totem, that is more or less dances with wolves, but with Mong- Mongols. Oh. And, 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 uh, and Mongolia. Uh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so it's written by a Chinese guy. It's Sheesh. very like. <laughs> <laughs> very, it's Ooh. set during the Maoist uh, era, and it's very um, uh, sort of infantilizing and essentializing and um, hashtag problematic. And, uh, 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 you know, and but um, in reality, uh, there's throughout Mongolian history, there's a lot of persecution of wolves. Which makes sense because they eat and they eat people's animals that people need those animals to survive. Um, and what what one of my I sort of divide my dissertation into chapters of ways that socialists tried to stop animals from dying, which includes disease, disaster, and predators. And of those three, the easiest to deal with are the predators because you just shoot them with a gun. That was my it's next question, to, Kenny. Yeah, it's harder to shoot <laughs> a drought with a gun. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, you can't shoot a drought. You can't. Uh, you said disease, predators, and uh, disaster, like oh, climatic yeah. disasters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't shoot germs with a gun. You can't shoot a drought, but you can. And 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 and. and uh, Speak more about this in like your dissertation work. They, these are like yeah. state-sponsored wolf hunts. Yes, yes, they are. Um, uh, so they they were both um, they were like professional hunters uh, who were employed by the state, um, and they had quotas, which mm. meant that. Um, so the way that a socialist economy works is that the inputs and outputs are planned at five years ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Every five years, they would say, um, for the next five years, this is how many wolves um, should be killed in each province. And I saw, you know, I found these in the archives and, you know, it it was, you know, it said, you know, in one province, there should be a thousand killed this year. And then it says the actual amount. It was like 56. And I was like, next year, how many should we kill? A thousand. You know, like, (laughs) um, but, but, um, it's uh, uh, there. They also had so they they had state sponsored uh, hunters who who were they killed more than just wolves, um, marmots, squirrels, other fur bearing animals. Oh, they killed more, marmots, much yeah. more, like way more marmots than wolves. Oh, um, but but um, they, they uh, um, the goal stated goal was to exterminate wolves, but they were ultimately unsuccessful but they they tried their darndest um and uh uh there were also bounties for wolves so like if you're a normal herder you probably don't have a gun but you you have you might if like you were a veteran or something like that and they allowed you to keep it um but but you don't necessarily need a gun to kill a wolf i won't get into it but like if you kill a wolf, um, you could turn it in and get a nice bounty, depending on if it's a male, female, or a pup. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and uh, um, there are a lot of sort of stories um, about people of these organized hunts. Um, and the, again, talking about translation, the the word the word for wolf hunt, aw, in modern Mongolian, a w. Um, and in classical Mongolian, ABBA, A-B-A, um, uh, and historically until like the 19th century meant a uh, circle hunt, which a um, a noble would organize these like, and the imperial period is like miles wide circles of hunters. Wow. And they slowly get together, slowly constrict until you have... A, uh, animals uh, uh, all quartered in in a circle, and then you just slaughter them. Wow! Uh, and, and that's the word that is now used for 
it's only used for wolf hunting nowadays. Huh. Wow. Um, and, and there's a lot of fame, like Marco Polo describes this this uh, this circle hunt. All all of the um, visitors to the Mongol Empire, and this was a style of hunting found outside of Mongolia as well. Um, but is Mongolia has very famous uh, examples of it. Um, and again, you know, it's hard to make the argument that. Mong- all Mongolians at all times were in tune with the environment when they uh, organized these things that killed thousands of animals at a time. Um, hmm. For mostly for for two reasons: one, military practice, yeah, and and getting food to go for on a military campaign, and then two, they would nobles would organize them when wolves were a problem. And they're mm. like their peasants or slaves would say, "Hey, there are wolves eating our sheep," and the the noble would, because he's the only one who could organize such a large event, um, would uh, more or less grab a posse and go wolf hunting. And there are um, two stories that I found. One famous with the attributed author, Sangduk, who is a very famous Sangduk the poet. Uh, he's a very famous uh, author in the 19th century. Um, and then an unattributed um, poem. Uh, uh, I don't know the author, but they're both about a wolf pleading for its life to mm. a noble that caught it in the circle. Mm. Um, sort of saying like, hey, it's not my fault I'm a sinner. I have to kill baby animals to survive. I'm like a thief. Like, And thieves only like you know, they they only steal to survive. So please have pity, Buddhist pity on me, um, uh, uh, um and uh, you know, um, let me uh, live. Wow, that's fascinating. That's really fascinating. Um, I I kind of want to follow up from that, Kenny. Um, yeah. And uh, so you like came across like this kind of stuff when you're doing like your like quote unquote like history research you came across before yes. and you know you were doing a lot of archival research what are some of like your favorite examples of mongolian folklore you found while doing this uh archival research okay yeah that, that's a that's a great question um uh so uh my favorite Example might be the what the one I didn't find it in the archives, unfortunately. Um, but still, in, but still, and that's the the story I just told about the llama and the wolf. Yeah, yeah, which and was that sort of. That's I, I like can see the, Daisy's uh, face as you said that they were really into that. <laughs> I, it's, it's 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 like you know uh, um, it, it I, unfortunately it's it was published in a book that's called like. Uh, Seven myths and seven truths about Blue Mongolia's blue dog, the wolf. Mm. Oh, hey, cat! <laughs> oh, baby cat is. Oh, on you Jason's can see. Camera. You can see my cat. I know. I haven't introduced you to baby my cat. Sighting, cat. Baby cat sighting. Baby cat sighting. Baby cat sighting. She came on for a second. Well, I'll try to wrangle her later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll try to wrangle her. Her name is Baby. In case you're wondering, that okay. is her actual name. Uh, very adorable. Um, uh, and uh. But the other ones are well, mostly these records uh, of um, these hunting conference organizers just going around getting stories from old timey old timer hunters. Um, there are similar um, sort of interviews that herders did, mm-hmm. but herders are much more um, numerous. So I think that they were. And they are the stock laborer in Socialist Mongolia, whereas hunters, I think, needed to do a. They needed to work to say, like, we are laborers in the Marxist sense. Like, we are the proletariat as well uh, as the herders, um, which included, like, interviewing, like, old timey, uh, uh, um, old timers about, like, uh, how they they and their dog uh, were able to kill a snow leopard, mm-hmm. um, uh, and uh, um, the, 
there uh, there was another great anecdote. Um, uh, this one actually was about a herding conference, and um, uh, mostly it's just talk like we as collective members have increased our livestock from one hundred to one hundred ten percent. You know, like very um, dry stuff. And but then one guy says like, oh, dogs are a problem. We should kill. Like some dogs are good, but there's too many dogs. We should kill them. And then the next guy's presentation is all about is like is like he started talking about his set topic, but then he was like, you know what, dogs are great. Without dogs, I wouldn't have been able to have all the animals that I have. Uh, and, and it's like the real problem is young people. Young people don't matter. <laughs> But you know what? It's always great? the young dogs. people. Dogs are great. And then sort of like, and then it went back and forth and sort of, but yes, it is always the young people. And it's great because today, old herders say young people don't know how to herd. They're, it's their fault. Um, they just care too much about uh, the foreign influence. And I found in 1956 uh, a, a number of old herders saying um, the problem today is the young herders. They don't know how to heard all they care about is the um foreign uh cultures they ju all just want to go to the city yeah um we need to like teach them and and pass on our knowledge <laughs> and, and of course those young herders who were layabouts are now the ones wagging their finger at today's youth yeah that, that's this is theater kid time it's it's the song kids from bye bye birdie <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> Awesome. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't let you come on Folkwise Live without uh, asking this question, but how have video games shaped your interest in history? That's a great question. So they shaped them heavily. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, as a kid, one of my favorite games was Age of Empires 2. And that's how I got into Mongolia. Um, you could, The campaign was, you could play as Genghis or Genghis uh, as as they called him then, mm -hmm. uh, I, I called them in the uh, game. The, the accurate Mongolian is, of course, Chinggis. Um, but um, uh, you can play like his campaigns. And I was like, this is so cool. I'm going to start reading about it. Um, and then uh, that was like in middle school and sort of throughout high school, I oh, sort of yeah. kept on coming back. In undergrad, I knew I wanted to be a history major mm -hmm. and they moved around a bit um, because I played Rome total war. I was like, maybe I want to study the Parthians and Iranians. Hell history. yeah. <laughs> and I had flirted with that for a while. I took a couple of ancient near Eastern classes with this really old, like uh, archeologist guy who is, uh, who was uh, not a good teacher, but knew a lot. Um, uh, but then I kept on coming back to Mongolia um, and uh, I will say that, you know, once you start learning history, it's oftentimes it sort of ruins the history games for no. you. <laughs> <laughs> or at least makes them harder to it. There's a, there's a hill that you need to jump over to, to, to turn off parts of your brain to enjoy. Um, although I do love Crusader Kings 3 in oh, part yeah. because it's, it's much less about history and more about like sort of a song of ice and fire yeah, style. Yeah, it's about like, intrigue. Uh, intrigue and yeah. who am I going to marry my child to, and like uh, what brother am I going to murder? And, uh, and, and, so. and I can't let you compare uh, Crusader Kings and a song of ice and fire without plugging this because my friend is a streamer uh, for this. I was Have say. you played the the uh, a song of ice and fire mod to CK two? I did. That's all. That one's a lot of fun. It's so, so, good. It's so good. He's been he's been streaming the uh, Aegon's Conquest recently. Oh, nice. Yeah, the Aegon's Conquest update. Yeah. Um, I've got. Can I ask like a kind of follow up question? Ask a follow up question, Daisy. Because okay, so the way that you answered that made me think about like there's a lot of things that when you, you get really interested in it, you have to like turn off your brain to part of it. Oh yes, yeah. whatever. Right, but like there's different types. It seems like there's different types of video games or approaches to kind of history in video games. And one yes. is like historical accuracy. And then the other one is like 
immersion in an imagined mindset of a person in the historical past. Right. Does, <laughs> is that is that anything? Because I'm think I'm thinking about like if in Crusader Kings, like if you have to make decisions about who your family has to marry, or you know, like who your kids have yeah. to marry, and like all these political decisions, like that's like you are becoming an active participant in the creation of the history versus yeah. I'm going to watch battles unfold as they did in history. Yeah, I, I think that's a huge part. And one of the reasons why I originally, like sort of my trajectory was Age of Empires to the Total War games because mm-hmm. you have a lot more like strategy and like figures right. that kind of stuff out. And then to to Crusader Kings and like um, part of that is to sort of like build the camera zooming out or rather zooming in. Um, uh, actually, in both can both zooming in and out just a different uh, zooming in on the individuals, but zooming out on like the the, the big picture. Like it's not about this little uh, horse guy has to go here um, necessarily. Um, but I think part of it, uh, I, th- I definitely think you're right that like now the w- what I was really into uh, end of high school, early undergrad was like, you know, it was like let's make Rome total war historically accurate. Like these Scythians need to have the right bow case, and and like you, you know, like they need to be wearing the right kind of shirt. Um, and like we have to set it up so that the the battle of uh, uh, between the Romans and the Parthians plays out like it actually can, you can play it out the way it can. Whereas now I'm more interested in uh, at, at least with Crusader Kings, just sort of being you know, like you said, getting immersed. Mm-hmm. Um, like I don't need to. It's fun playing like Ivar the Boneless or Bjorn Ironside or any of Ragnar Harry Pants's, uh, Ragnar Lothbrok. Uh, again, a translation thing. Ragnar Lothbrok means hairy britches. Huh. And yet, and yet, all of his uh, sons uh, have translated ep- epithets, but uh, but Ragnar not. Well, does not. Huh. <laughs> but um, uh, they. Uh, you know, I'm more interested in just sort of like the. I think it's like the RPG games where I really uh, attracted to those. We were going to play Knights of the Republic. Um, that's sort of like um, engaging and like immersing yourself as an individual character, yeah, rather than um, uh, watching stuff unfold or. Um, being as obsessed about like the what kind of sword certain um, dudes have, <laughs> uh, or the the big controversial questions: Can we have Amazon? Can we have ladies? Uh, oh my god! All the oh no! <laughs> when, do we, when do we get to the? When do we get the ladies? <laughs> uh, Kenny, can we kind of lighten around some fun questions? Please, please. All right. What's the story in this photo? Uh, <laughs> we need to know about your your horse pick. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So this this is a horse statue outside of Um uh, I can uh, type that in case folks don't. Um, um, the capital of the South Hongai province in mm-hmm. Mongolia. Mm-hmm. Um, I spent two two weeks. Um, in the archives, just you know, woke up nine nine to six in oh. the archive. They gave me my own office. They displaced the they they kicked out uh, two of their own workers to give me an office for some reason. Uh, well, the reason why is because they don't usually get foreigners to come. Like mm-hmm. foreigners usually don't do research. Um, historians usually usually don't do research in the local archives which is a major untapped opportunity yeah um um, because that's where i found all the stuff with the hunting folklore and uh conferences and stuff oh cool Uh, these really granular details that um are not necessarily in the national archives um but um uh 
the, the my last day was for, okay. So I planned Friday is my last day of research. I'm going to mm-hmm. leave Saturday. Mm-hmm. Friday, the, the workers. So the, the archive boss loved me. She was, she was helped me so much. Like I would apologize for my bad Mongolian. And she's like, language is hard. It's fine. You know, don't worry about it. Um, she, she told me to, to meet with, she got her, uh, um, daughter to give me a tour of the mu- museum which her husband ran so sort of a power couple of running the uh, archive of the museum uh, her daughter uh, studied English in, uh, in the capital um, and so we were able, both practicing uh, our second languages uh, with each other and at the afterwards her, her mom was like how was her English was it bad I was like, no, it was good. <laughs> but uh, so she really liked me, but the uh, the her subordinates did not, I think, because I sold their office. Um, and uh, they came in and were like, we got you your ticket. It's for one a.m. It's for one p.m. today. I was like, I was planning on staying all day working. I I was I told you I'm leaving on Saturday. They're like, nope, today. Um, and. I was continued to work, and four of them just stood there staring at me. I was like, "Okay, let's go." And they're like, "We have to show you the. St- we have to. Our boss told you told us that we had to show you the tourist uh, locations." And they drove me to the uh, the the large horse statue outside. Um, and this was like an hour before I got on the bus and left. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, and uh, the. I, I uh, with the 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 one guy who worked at the archive who like never came in to do work, like uh, all the other archives, um, archival workers were women. This guy never showed up, and uh, the boss even one time she was like, "Did he come in today?" I was like, "No." And she was like, uh, "But uh, uh, he." Uh, so he he had a car, so it was his job to drive me around, which I felt bad for. Um, so he took me to the um, the statue complex, and all around the sides are smaller statues of horses, um, as well as uh, Buddhist uh, um, uh, gods. In the in the background. Yes, and, and it's it's like a. Um, the the whole complex is like a circle, mm-hmm. and th- this one's like uh, sort of in the center uh, back, but all surrounding it there are more statues of like little horses and and, and stuff like that. Okay, and then um, you notice these blue scarves, and yep. these are uh, Hatuk, uh prayer scarves that are uh, traditional in Tibetan style Buddhism, which includes. Uh, Mongolia, although now it's more of a cultural item than a religious item. Sure. And you, you, uh, pre- when there's an honored guest, you present them with this prayer scarf, or you attach it to an item of uh, religious or cultural significance. Um, uh, whether it's a uh, a statue, a um, the rock cairn, a wall, which is often placed on like holy mountains. You sort of, you can put a scarf there, um, and uh, this, so these are more or less all off prayer offerings. Yeah, from people who uh, came to visit the statue. And, and this statue is a famous horse, racehorse, uh, from the province. Oh, okay, racehorse. This is yes. real uh, little Sebastian energy. And then it looks exactly. like it looks like it's about to torrentially downpour. It did right, like and I, as soon as I got on the uh, uh, the bus, it started torrentially downpouring to the point where there was a flash flood. Oh my and god! A giant, a giant flood uh, on the road covered the road on the way out, and the bus just drove through it. And we passed a whole bunch of co- smaller cars that were got stuck, and like people trying to get them out. There was like a small little island. Uh, surrounded by water that had like a hundred sheep just sort of pet, uh, stacked on top of each other trying to stay out of the water. Mm-hmm. And the whole time I was like, we're going to get stuck. We're going to get stuck. Uh, but we managed not to. Uh, 
uh, uh, thankfully. But uh, that it was an interesting uh, conclusion to a interesting two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like it. Um, it. It was. Hey, next question. This comes from special uh, guest sleuth, aka I DM'd her uh, to think <laughs> of a good question for you. This is special guest sleuth uh, Amida Vempity. Uh, if you uh-huh. were to play a Nadam sport, which one would you choose to display your manliness? Is how she phrased uh- it. Okay, so Nadam is uh, the Mongolian summer uh, holiday, which is uh, 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 celebrated by three, the three quote manly sports. Yep, uh, which are horse racing, archery, and wrestling. Now, um, women uh, participate in horse racing and uh, archery, but not wrestling. Okay. Wrestling is still only men, and let so if you Google Mongolian wrestler, you'll see yes they have a very Powerful skimpy look. outfit yeah very skimpy outfit that like a, there's a jacket that just has like the back and sleeves and uh-huh. leaves your chest there, and um, folklore has it that this is because one time a woman wrestled and won, and now you got to show your chest to make sure the late late tricky ladies come in. And uh, uh. try and wrestle, uh, um, but uh, um, and when I say women can race horses, really it's only children who race horses. Oh, interesting. Uh, the idea is that you want to see how fast the rider, the the horse is, not the rider. Mm. Um, and children are like light, but also this is like a child endangerment thing and every like year like a child that you die is from racing horses sure and every year like unicef or and like other like watchdogs condemn mongolia and mongolia says this is our culture um i don't know maybe there's a better way to do it than having children ride on horses really quickly but uh um i i've wrestled in not um, and always lose Oh, uh, um, I have yet to, and I'm not a great, I'm not a very good horse rider. Um, uh, so, and I'm not strong enough to pull back a bow, but I feel like I'd still want to try and do the archery, even though I know I'd be terrible at it. Uh, I feel like it's the least, I'm the least likely to injure myself, uh, <laughs> unless the arrow ricochets back on me or something like it's that. hard to do <laughs> yeah. um uh, yeah uh so uh we couldn't get your camera working that's why you're in no. front of the 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 photo of the famous horse um yes so in, in, instead of showing us the cats can you explain the cats names yes so right now no. so I'm like, I'm also gonna plug your Instagram if oh, yes. you're <laughs> that because all all of the cats are featured in abundance there. Hell yeah! Yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, my, I had I had she passed away right before I went to Mongolia. Mm-hmm. Uh, a cat named Tebow. Uh, she's the Aww. white, uh, large, fluffy one, um, and she is named for an Ewok in Star Wars. <laughs> uh, uh, Hell yeah! I, I was telling my friend, I was like, "What are the obscure Ewoks?" And he was like, "Oh yes, as opposed to all the famous ones." Uh, <laughs> w- I was gonna Wicked say, Daisy? I don't think I can name a single Ewok. You can't name Sorry. Wicked Daisy. I'm okay. not that hardcore. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep Tebow, Tebow, keep going. <laughs> yeah, so Tebow, so it's also a fun thing where like Tebow is the striped one with like a. Uh, Dead animal on his head. Yes, who, uh, yes, badass. Who gets marked by R two D two. Yes, uh, and uh. it's kind of a jerk. But <laughs> in the novel, both the novelization and the uh, cartoon series, eighties cartoon series Ewoks, which yes. I watched all the time as a kid, um, the characterization of Tebow was instead switched with that of Paplu, who is the uh, young Ewok who steals the speeder bike. I'm. So, so in the cartoon and in the novelization, Tebow is a poet. He's like, you know, like a young, like sort of, uh, um, sort of like sensitive soft boy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, whereas uh, 
Pat, Pat Blue is sort of the the big jerk. But the 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 uh, so when I was eleven, I guess I decided to name I I don't. You know, uh, I, when I adopted Tebow when I was 11, I got her as a kitten. And I was like, I'm going to name her after the non canon uh, interpretation of Tebow <laughs> personality. And Nerd I, alert. <laughs> I love it. I respect <laughs> it. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then, um, so sh- she passed away. Um, I also adopted a cat while I was in Mongolia named. Grand Ad Meowral Throne. Oh my god. Um, wow. Oh unfortunately, unfortunately, she uh, um, passed away after a month. There was a pre-existing condition mm. that uh, I was unaware of, and that was that was really hard. Yeah. I, um, and, and so I decided to... I wasn't going to adopt any more animals in Mongolia. I was going to wait until I was in the States with sort of... Um, a more robust veterinary hit, like records for animals. Yeah. As opposed to someone posting on Facebook saying, I found this cat on the street. Yes. Uh, and then, so as soon as I got back to the States uh, three years ago, I moved back to Bloomington. And uh, I think within two weeks, I went with Kathleen uh, and she helped me pick out uh, Ahsoka. And, who, and, and Brendan, right? Um, Brendan's there at Bloomington, but he helped figure out the name. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. They, they are both well, talking but, about Ahsoka in the chat is why yes, I bring it up. But, 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 uh, Kathleen was, uh, there with me at, at, when I met her. Um, uh, and, and, uh, it took me a while. I was like, I want to do another Star Wars name, but what do I do? Then I decided like, you know, she has stripes. She has big ears. Uh, let's, mm-hmm. let's go. And, you know, Ahsoka is a great uh, uh, one of my favorite characters. Same. So uh, that that's 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 why I went with that. And then there's my family's cats, who Ahsoka doesn't really get along. Or rather, they do not like her Aww. because <laughs> she likes to play with her claws out. <laughs> uh, uh, and they calm are, down. <laughs> And they are Arthur, Arthur and Kylo, after King Arthur and Kylo Ren. Nice. <laughs> and, and Kylo is, is a, a black cat, so oh, that's of sort of. Um, and so Arthur is a weird gray boy. I think uh, so bad it hurts. Would like to point out that uh, Ahsoka's last name is Pano, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, Ahsoka Pano. Also, uh, uh, Gustav Mahler, 57 in chat, says, I'm really happy that I'm not the only person on this earth who has the names Tebow and Paplu on command. It's validating. <laughs> well, a big part of it was the uh, Star Wars customizable card game. Yeah! Like, yeah! They, 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 That's how I know anyone's name, too. <laughs> they had every imaginable side character and a little blurb about them on the top. Yes. And, and, and Tebow's blurb said, Poet. You know, like, uh, and, and like Star Watcher, and like hinted that he's force sensitive. Um, uh, I, I guess they were following the uh, novelization uh, characterization as well. But uh, I never had. Fascinating. I never had another person to play that game with, but I still collected it a lot uh, uh, and played against myself. Sure. All right, Daisy. Before I get the tier list set up, you've got some, uh, you've got some uh, chat questions, right? Yeah, I've got uh, three chat questions for you. Are you ready? Okay, I am. So bad at Earths. Hello again. Hey there. Uh, wants to know if you would consider quote foundational texts like the Secret History to be folklore. Um, I would say that. So. My mentor, Chris Atwood, um, has been working a lot on the secret history. He's coming out with a new translation sometime this year, published via Penguin. So it'll be like mm. 10, 15 bucks versus the previous version, which was around 100. So uh, it'll be a bit more accessible. Oh, sorry, the previous scholarly best version. There are a number of like popular yeah. versions, but they're, uh, they're like translations of. They, someone took someone else's translation from Mongolian into English 
and translated it into another form of English. Um, and they're, you know, uh, and they like, like <laughs> Paul Kahn randomly made the entire work, which is a prose work with a few verses in it. He turned it all into uh, verses. That's um, cool. Yeah. Uh, yes, but I, I feel like it's doesn't read the way that it was intended to be written. Oh, sure, sure. Interesting. Sure. Uh, uh, so I, I would say, like, include both if you're going to do that, if that makes sense. Yes. It's like, it's it's both. the it's oh it's the Alexander Pope Iliad, isn't it? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but uh, um, uh, so the, Chris Atwood has shown that there are previously written texts that the secret history just secret historian just copies, mm. like because there are other sources that have the same that call upon this te- these previous texts but do not use the secret history, if that makes sense. Yeah. So there's like, a, so he uses Bible criticism more or less to sort of yeah, trace. Yeah, that's what that reminded me of, yeah. Uh, um, so there are definitely like, the secret historian methods were using pre-written uh, histories, um, sort of common stories, and like, as well as like deep interviews with like certain living people, like the people who come off really well, uh, they happen to be uh, living in uh, 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 when Monke Khan uh, um, commissioned the secret historian, and uh, that's another. Uh, uh, people often claim that the secret history was was written either during Chinggis Khan's or Ogede's uh, life. This is not the case. It was actually written under Monke, um, who wanted to. Uh, Use history as it has often been used, which is to legitimize his role, and uh, in particular, uh, legitimize the fact that uh, he should be ruler and not the uh, relatives of his that he murdered. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but there are a lot of like folklore elements in that there are clearly like stock verses and phrases mm. that like. Right. Uh, um, like uh, I'm trying to think of a good couple of examples, um, sort of coming up uh, blank right now. But um, um, the, the, uh, there are like the, uh, eyes like fire and uh, soul. I, I could find them later, but um, there there are like clearly elements of folklore and like uh, um, even method methodologically folkloric whereas there are also like um like the the early section is just like a uh, it's more like the bible's uh, book of i think it's kings well, whichever bible uh testament is just the list of kings uh, that's more that's a chronicle okay yeah um it's more or less that is like yeah, uh, the, the, it's um, yeah. I don't, I don't know my Bible, um, but uh, uh, the um, uh, it's a like a the genealogy of Chinggis Khan, just like you know, sure. this is this guy's father, this is that guy's father, and, but then they introduce a couple of fun um, uh, uh, anecdotes. Uh, about um, various things that teach lessons about the proper way that society should be run. Like, oh, like my one of his ancestors, he's called Bodin Char the Stupid um, because his brothers always make fun of him for being stupid. And they kick him out and he, he runs into these nice people who live in harmony and they welcome him in and take care of him. And then his brothers come by and he comes by and he returns to his brothers and says, brothers, brothers, it is good for a, a body to have a head and a coat to have a collar. And they're like, what? And he's like, there's these people that live equally. They don't have anyone who leads them. Let's conquer them. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> And, and he leads his brothers and conquers these nice people that took him in ah. and lived unnaturally without a ruler. 
So the texts are like kind of folklore, kind of not. Yeah. Exactly. So okay. yeah. Yeah. A real mix of sort of like be, just the way that it was constructed, like uh, the his secret historian just sort of did a grab bag. And it's also like he's not a good. He didn't care as much about accurate history as like what felt right. And like he didn't care about uh, anything outside of Mongolia. So all the conquests are like don't make sense chronologically or geographically. But like the it's about the characters kind of kind of deal sure um, sure. um and, and how it impacted mongolia and the royal royal family rather than um you know oh some city you know the uh some city out there they they um uh they, they conquered them and so forth mm-hmm. and here's a list of all the enemies they conquered um so yeah it, it's it's a real uh sort of multi-genre piece of work and then the way it was nice. um it was if any and the way it was preserved was actually increased folklorization of it, it if that makes sense in that it was preserved in both like later texts yeah, but also yeah. from oral histories yes and they like up, really up dialed up the magic and like the uh sort of um supernatural mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. like um uh and and other like sort of inserted other popular stories about the Mongol Empire, which were not in the secret history, but it's like this fits right. Like everyone knows about like this story about like the nine wise heroes, so let's put it in there. Um, and, and that's sort of how it's been. And then like eventually, scholars work to sort of pick out these later elements to the based on um, a surviving Chinese text, uh, which was uh, um, sort of a transcription of the Mongolian text used for translators. They didn't care what it said. They just said, cared about what words were in it. Right. Uh, so, to pra- so translators could practice uh, this, uh, th- this language uh, of, of at the t- eventually became enemies. Right. Well, I have a couple other chat questions, but yeah. I think we should save them. They're kind of quick, but I think we should save them for after our tier list. Yeah, because you'll be because you'll you're, you're staying on until eleven. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, let's get to the let's get to the yeah. tier list. Um, it's this is a good one. This I'm pretty <laughs> proud of this one, and thank you for <laughs> yeah another guest sleuth, uh, Gustav Mahler, who helped yes. me put this together. But Kenny, yes. I know you've seen Kathleen's episode, but have you ever made a tier list before? Uh, no. Um, what, what do you mean by tier list? Oh, wow. man, tier list. They come Funny from... you should ask. Funny you should ask, because we're about to make one with you right now. Services, Dom and Daisy are S plus tier. Oh, my God. We're not oh even... We God. haven't even made it wow. on S plus. It's yeah. so high. But... Wow. That is to say. That is to say. That is to say. Okay, so... There are these uh, tier lists or creative ways that come from, like, uh, fighting games and, like, uh, JRPGs of, like, uh, ranking uh, choices in video games. Uh, but people on Twitch, like, use them to rank everyday, uh, everyday life. So, with that being said, we have a tier list for you. If you click, click watch stream, you can see it. And it is um, something we alluded to earlier, the most iconic... Uh. Star Wars Legends, uh, because you were talking okay. about you were a crouchy old Star Wars fan who all your favorite yes. stories have been decanonized. <laughs> so I, it was so hard to nail them down. This one's a little bigger than normal, so we have, might have to work uh, a, yeah. a little okay. faster through this. But I tried to like come up with the most iconic uh, Star Wars yeah. uh, Legends, like the decanonized oh, yes. extended the universe. Oh, yeah. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Starting off right at the top, we've got we've got uh, we've got uh, the Thrawn trilogy. Where does Thrawn say S being the highest, D being the lowest? Where is Thrawn? S. S. Absolutely, absolutely, right up to S. You mean you named a cat after Thrawn? He's your dude. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, next up, we've got Shadows. Shadows of the Empire, the yeah. huge multimedia rollout. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna have to go. I want to say B plus or A minus, but let's let's be nice and say A. Okay, let's say A for now. It could it could drop down to it could yeah. drop down to yeah. You a can minus you later. can change this up as you go too if you're like 
go with I, I, gut I, and then you can change it. Yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. big Boba Fett fan, and uh, his pro- Shadows of the Empire much better than the recent uh, War of the Bounty Hunters that sort of took its uh, timeline place. Oh, uh, fair. Don't... Yeah. Okay. Good point. Uh, um, where are we going with uh, uh, let's say let's this is Rogue Squadron, but let's say the X Wing series. X Wing series. Oh man, I really like those. They're but, so good. Like they're they're not There's as an Ewok like, in those too. <laughs> there is an Ewok. Yeah, there is an Ewok in those. <laughs> uh, uh, but like it's it's tricky because they 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 go up and down in quality more. That's true. But I'll I'll I'll, I'll be generous and say A for now. Cool. Uh, a above shadows or a below? Or you said shadows was a minus B plus. So I'm I'm assuming yeah, that means yeah. a above shadows. Uh, yeah. Next, uh, the Yuzang Vong are here, and we've got the, yeah, the new, new Jedi, Jedi Order. Order. Where do you put New Jedi Order? B because it was so long. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I never finished That's that. That's a good reason for something to be B. Um, got it's it. Like Twenty books. Like I don't know. And like halfway through. They, George Lucas is like, oh, you you named one of uh, uh, Han and Leia's kids Anakin. That's confusing. You should kill him. <laughs> they, they, they totally rewrote, like, had to totally rewrite everything, and uh, yeah, but but there's still some really cool stuff, and uh, um, uh, I I as a whole like what they talked about with. What they showed with the post, with the New Republic, more than what uh, the sequel trilogy did with the Daisy. New say it. What? Oh, that. <laughs> you mean my sign, New yes. Republic? Who this? Um. All right. And you mentioned <laughs> Han and Leia. Like you mentioned Han and Leia. Next up, we got the courtship of Princess Leia. Great Man, title. <laughs> it's a great title. Bad book. D. Hey. Hey. Where's that going? D. D. Great to uh, D. Next up, uh, next up, uh, the, the... And, and you know, the good parts of that made it into the Clone Wars, which is the Witches of Dothamir. That uh, yeah. So, so there's some good world world building, but it's just like goofy and you know like we how did they got together at the end of Return of the Jedi? We don't need to like see like add, have an added uh, love tri- triangle with like. A uh, sexy prince who yeah. appears out of nowhere. Uh, you mentioned this one earlier, so I'm excited to get to it. Yeah. The Tales series. A. A. Now, where where in A? Is it higher than Rogue well, Squadron? High, highest, highest A. Highest A. Let's go. Let's go. Speaking of Boba nice. Fett. Uh, how, like, yeah. Speaking of Boba Fett. Um, <laughs> Isheep, Isheep says, speak for yourself. Always down for a sexy prince love triangle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Next yeah, up, that, that's, a very, that, that's a very fair point. I just feel like Zuckus. they they could have done a sexy prince loves triangle in a different way. Sure, okay. we're we're moving to uh to before the original series with these uh, next yes. few. Next up is uh Darth Bane. Darth Bane, um, those are good, but uh, it's always tricky having like the the. I'd say B. Whoa, okay. A B above uh, New Jedi Order? Oh, yeah, above New Jedi Order. Cool. I, 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 I like Ch- it. Chats, um, chat might be mad. But part of it also might be I read it like when I was older. So I don't have the same positive. Fair. I don't have the same yeah. like memories of it as the Tales books sure. or the X Men books or Shadows of the Empire. Like I, I reread the Thrawn trilogy recently. That mostly holds up, except for Luke's clone, Luke with two U's. Oh my god. That that's it's X24. Not, yeah. That that, that, that was a, a misstep. But uh, yeah, chat disagrees chat, with that, but we shocked. have to but we have to keep going. Next up is Darth Plagueis. <laughs> Next up is Darth Plagueis. I have to admit I never read Darth Plagueis. We can leave it we can leave it off the list. We can leave it off the list. Uh yeah. uh next up Darth Maul Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter um I read it. I don't remember it. So let's say C. Okay. Fair. 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 That's that's a fair assessment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, ne- next up. Next up. Uh, we've got uh, the Mace Windu Shatterpoint. Uh, that, that's a B. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, under New Jedi Order. Okay. Okay. Uh, but but that that's a really fun exploration of Mace Windu, who's you know 
who doesn't love Mace Windu? Oh, I mean, purple lightsaber. Kind of, you have me there. <laughs> I, I mean, he's kind of a jerk to Anakin and just in general, but well. he's still a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, next up is the uh, Dark Lord Rise of Darth Vader, like the post episode three book. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I don't. I I only read it once, and I, I it's starting to blur with like the Disney era post Vader stuff. So let's say C. C above Shadowhunter. Uh, no, below. Okay. Because I I recognize Shadowhunter by its cover, whereas mm. like. I, I that Vader one is less uh, sure uh, iconic in my mind. Uh, next up is uh, the Legacy of the Force series, which I always think is interesting for how the sequel trilogy took some stuff from this. But yes, Legacy of the yeah. Force. Uh, D. Oh, is it D below Courtship of Princess Leia? Yes. Oh, yes. oh my gosh! Oh. I love it. Like, I, I didn't like what the, like, I'm a big Boba Fett fan. I did not like. Yep. I'm I not know. a fan of Darren Travis. I, I don't. Mean. I don't like what she did with Boba Fett, uh, and I really don't like turning Jason into a Sith, him killing Mara Jade. Like it, it's, it's clearly like you know like season seven uh, of a of a show, like they've gone off the rails, <laughs> like. Season four of Battlestar Galactica. What are you doing, guys? Come on, you know, like, yeah. and, and and you know, Karen Travis's hatred of the Jedi you know, becomes really clear, and like, criticize the Jedi, but understand that they're the good guys. Sure. <laughs> like, ultimately, they have good intentions. And then, last up, the. Splinter the of the Mind's Eye. Original Star Wars yeah. Legend. Splinter of the Mind's Eye. I'm going to put C. <gasps> Just, <sighs> like, the historian in me wants to put it higher. Sure. But b because it's, like, so weird, like... It but, is definitely like reading a non-canonical gospel. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a heretical verse. It's, like, a, it's a heretical verse. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Daisy, do you know the story about Splinter of the Mind's Eye? I no, I'm just laughing at this it, uh, so, at your comparison. So basically, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, if they didn't get a ton of money, was going to be episode f like the sequel to Star Wars was going to be instead of Empire. It's like basically Luke Han and or Luke Leia and Darth Vader in one basically in one setting. What? If they, if they didn't have all the money to do Hoth battle and Cloud City and Dagobah, they were going to do a much more protracted personal story is the sequel and that's wow. splinter of the mind's eye like the guy wrote oh it thinking God. i am making star wars 2 and it ends up being like kenny said heretical verse <laughs> that's amazing yeah but it's also the first instance of the word kyber crystal that's right kyber crystal from that oh. i remember watching yeah. rogue one and hearing kyber crystal and they fucking didn't did they <laughs> yeah, Alan Foster literally thought he was writing the second movie and got mad when Empire wow. came out. Um, and, so and, is this bottom and, of C? Yeah, bottom of C. There and, we go. And now, and now Disney is refusing to uh, pay him uh, the rights for many, many of the many books adaptations that he wrote. Wow. Damn. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm pretty sure he or... I can't remember if he has cancer or his wife has cancer. Oh, no. But it, it's beyond, it's more like, it's beyond just, I would like some money, please. It is, I need this I money. I need money. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, people Dang. people in chat were talking about how there's no uh, uh, Jedi Apprentice series. that yeah. I considered like, putting Jedi Apprentice on there. We were talking about that. Um, so th that, that, if that one was there... Uh, that's the Kevin J. Anderson young yep. reader or teen reader one, yep. right? Yep. That would probably go and see. Okay. Like I, I, I liked it, um, and, um, but like too goofy. Like I don't like Kevin J. Anderson's writing. Like he is too goofy and like, like Dala. Like you can't follow up Thrawn with Dala. Sure. Like, uh, well, we'd be crushing sons. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm it's an invincible little ship that blows up the sun. 
what what is what is your uh uh Star Wars legend that you wish was on here? Yeah. Let me turn and look at my bookshelf. <laughs> is it true? Well, think about this think about amazing. that as I get the game uh, as I get the game back up. But everyone, yeah, here yeah. is the a historian yeah. has declared this is the official list of Star Wars legends. <laughs> on a, Star Wars Legacy, the comic the comic series. Star, I, oh, hey, That's Gustav next, Muller, Gustav Muller, did I not? Did we not bring up Star Wars Legacy? I did bring that up. I did bring that up. So <laughs> that was an option. That was an option. Oh yeah, amazing stuff. Set a hundred hundred years, years later, and like Luke comes back as a Force ghost, right? Yep, and his uh, drug addicted uh, oh. like great grandson, and like you know, hey, it, it, so and yeah, like Cade. they they do they do interesting stuff with the Sith and the Jedi, mm-hmm. um, as well as like moving the galaxy forward. Uh, that it's just a lot of fun. Uh, Cade can be a bit like annoying at the beginning, but like it was, it was more. It was more. I like that Force Ghost more than uh, I like that portrayal of Luke giving advice from beyond the grave more than uh, say a canon one. I, I nice. I'm gonna get you to. Admit that nine is the worst, but um, <laughs> I, 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 my brothers would never talk with me again. Oh my but, gosh! Uh, no, no, but honestly, I, I I thought nine was bloated and sort of flawed, but I I enjoy watching it. I watched uh, it afterwards. I have fun watching it. We will ad- we will agree to disagree. I I <laughs> I, I I sometimes I can't, I wake up and I think, damn. Episode nine happened, but as as far as as far as stuff that is no longer canon and ought to be, the official the official list is here, and I I thought of a good one, Daisy, on a scale from Thrawn to uh, Legacy of the Force. That's pretty. How good. much do you hate Mara Jade? There it is. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, if you got more, uh, if you got this more, more chat questions, Daisy, you can do those as yeah. I get the game loaded back up. We'll play the game for a little bit longer. I've got um, one more Star Wars question, so I'll ask that one yeah. first, do it, and do then it, I've do got it. two two other Mongolia questions. Great. So, of course, Gustav Mahler wants to know uh, how many Ewoks you can name right now. <laughs> We, we, Wicked W. Warwick, Chief Chirpa, Low Gray, Paplu, Tebow, um, Chuka Truck. We're going into the Ewok adventure movies now, folks. Uh, Chuka Truck, the, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Axeman. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, oh, God. We got, uh, oh, Princess Nisa, from, again, from the um, Ewok. Uh, um, uh, 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 cartoon series, but of course, uh, um, uh, we got uh, um, uh, what Chubray? I think is one Chubray. Uh, <laughs> you could that, be making okay, all of these fake. up, and I'd be just be like, okay, Ewoks, yeah, these these are definitely I was Ewoks. Say, that sounds fake, my guy. This is 100 like, Ewoks. What? 